Hello and welcome to this week's video where I will be reviewing the 2010 Renault Clio 1.6 automatic TomTom -tom edition. So let's dive right in. I'm going to start this review by talking about the car's dials. Now they're nice and big, clearly laid out with the rev counter on the left, speedometer on the right, temperature gauge with the rev counter, fuel gauge with the speedometer. Also this displays information such as your handbrake there, handbrake off, sign disappears, handbrake on, sign appears again. And also in the car starting your indicators, left appears on this side, right appears on that side, on the right side and also you have a tiny little screen in the middle that tells you if a door if a door's open in the car left right back forward moving on i'm going to talk about the center control stack as you can see this car's high spec version in fact it's a tom tom edition so it has this little screen included with tom tom navigation and also it has bluetooth uh, moving down you have these two events here and you can adjust them this amount of airflow coming from them etc etc moving down you have your climate control so ac front demister rear demister auto temperature down temperature up fan speed and whether you want the airflow up or downwards pretty simple that and it's a nice layout however the quality is well it's lackluster let's say moving down you have um this car is from the era of cd so you have a uh, input is cd there cd jack button there volume control here infotainment uh, screen control here uh and then you have your radio your but all the other infotainment controls right there moving down this car has keyless start so it has a starter button uh has a lights nice and big and it clicks with a nice resound so you know you've clicked it there's your car locks and further down you have your little uh storage uh, space where you can put your phone your car keys etc etc and back there you have your usbs for charging your phone and down you have your uh, gear lever so pretty simple park reverse neutral drive and this car also has a manual mode and then you have your handbrake here no center armrest and there's a cup holder way back there this car steering wheel has a lot of controls so you here you have your um, cruise control controls and on this side you have your viper controls pretty short stalks and sometimes you might uh, miss them while driving on this side you have your indicators and also your light controls and through the viper stalk you can control the little screen in the center what's what this see that that's moving as i press this button now on the right side you have your mirror controls can change the angle of the mirror side mirrors and then you have your window controls here up down pretty simple and the windows if you click them down, uh, twice it goes down twice up it goes up automatically as well it does take a bit of time however it's not much of an issue the main issue with this is the droning sound it's quite loud and it might might annoy you after a while On this side you also have the air vent there um, pretty much overall this interior is pretty smart however uh, nicely laid out for a car of 2010 however the quality is um, well let's just say it's better. Here in the back seat of the 2010 Renault Clio first thing I notice is that it's very very cramped back here um, I'm a tall person and my head is touching both the roof on from the top and from the side and i barely have enough re knee room and the seat is quite a bit way forward now if the seat was in my usual driving position there would only be space for a child back there um, no adult can fit there as for practicality features well you have a big seat pocket um you have some strange story there i don't know what that can be used for and you have some very small door pockets um can barely fit a small coke bottle in there um 
that's pretty much it it's, it's a pretty basic back, back seat situation in this car here we have the engine bay it's a 1.6 litre petrol with uh, around 130 horsepower it's, good, it's decent performance however the gearbox is only a four speed which lets the engine down and also the layer is quite confusing it's quite tightly packed so if you want to do repairs you can't put your hand anywhere and sometimes you don't know what's where in this engine i mean if you want to get to the battery you have to remove a lot of covers which is um unnecessary so driving 2010 renault clio uh, first thing again as i mentioned in the last review uh, that was quite high up this is you're very very low so you feel like you're on the ground and you're just sliding on the ground um, however for such a small car visibility is very very good you have a nice view at the back nice view at the front you have nice and large ring mirrors and like a nice and large window so you know where your car is and it goes exactly where you point it and that leads me to the steering as well the steering is direct and light not too light and not too heavy it's nicely weighted um, lot on low speeds the throttle response is good as well so you press uh, lightly foot down and the car lunges forward however that's uh, when an issue comes in if you're going a higher speed um, the gearbox uh, so you go at a high speed like 50 miles an hour uh, you want to overtake someone on the motor you press your foot down the gearbox takes a lot of time uh, to change down and then um, and then it goes so um, you might miss the um, uh, overtake spot but um, overall it's, it's decent enough for a small car um, fuel economy fuel economy is not good at all for a small car uh, right now the trip computer is telling me it averages 22.7 miles per gallon which is not good considering it's not even it's a, it's, it's a very light car it's not heavy at all and well that's just it also another issue with this car is the reliability um, Renault uh, does not have a very good record of reliability especially for a car uh, of this age now this is 10 years old so You've got to be careful uh, how much you drive it or how you drive it so on the motorway you th tread lightly on it you drive it at lower speed so that it doesn't break down Now that's a review dealt with, it's time for the generalist verdict. This car, the styling is conservative, it doesn't stand out but it's not bad either and it's a mixed bag. Interior design uh, for a super mini of, uh, of 10 years old is it's, uh, a decent design but quality is lacking in every single area. Apart from the seats, the seats are comfortable and supportive. Partly because this one has leather seats. Uh, practicality, uh, well it's a super mini so practicality isn't good at all actually. Um, the boot is cramped, uh, rear space is cramped unless you are a child and in the front even uh, for a tall person you have to keep your seat all the way back if you need if you want to have any chance of driving the car properly in terms of the engine well the engine is is strong but the gearbox lets it down um the otherwise the performance is fine uh fuel economy is horrible it's, it's absolutely horrible 22 miles per gallon for such a small car 
best be avoided actually um so overall i think it's uh it gets a five out of ten rating i would not recommend this car however if you need to have a car that does the basics this is the car for you thank you for watching this video please don't forget to like subscribe and share and stay tuned for more videos like this. See you later.